continuing with Aristotle's discussion of friendship, which is in books 8 and 9 of your text, I want to distinguish friendship, or philia in Greek, which is the Greek term, from another Greek word for love. Because fr uh, friendship and philia are, is a word for love. Uh, I want to distinguish philia from another Greek term called, uh, which you might be familiar with, namely eros. So there's philia and eros. And the difference between the two is really the difference between uh, what we might say uh, love, to love something, and to be in love with something. Okay? I often ask my class this, and no one really gets the answer. What's the difference between loving something or someone uh, or and being in love with them? Or when someone says, uh, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. They often, they often don't say, I'm in love with you and I don't love you. What's the difference? Think about that. What is the difference between love and being in love? And there is actually an answer for the Greeks, and it's embedded in the language. And it's the distinction between philia and eros. Let's start with eros. Eros, being in love, um, a couple attributes about it. We often say we fall in love, and we become madly in love, right? So right off the bat, it's something outside of our control to some extent, right? We fall in love, uh, whereas with philia, we have more control over it. It's something that, that we can inculcate, it's something within our control, like a habit, like that we have possession over, right? It's something uh, within the grasp or within the power of our will, okay? On the other hand, Eros, we say we fall madly in love, or I'm crazy in love, or there was a movie with Steve Carell called uh, Crazy Stupid Love. We become irrational when we're in love. We become manic, is the Greek word for, or mania, is the Greek word for madness or, or craziness. We become insane, right? Uh, whereas philia is a more rational type of love, okay? So right there we have something in our control. Philia is something in our control and it's rational, whereas eros is outside of our control and is, to a certain extent, uh, irrational. And so you might want to think of the distinction between the two in the same way we've been talking about the distinction between happiness and pleasure, even though there's a relationship there. But the real difference between eros and philia, being in love and love, is that the nature of eros is synonymous for the Greeks with the nature of desire. It's actually the same word, desire or need or want. So when someone says, I'm in love with you, what they're really saying is, I need you, I want you. Uh, I desire you. And they've actually done studies on this. Um, they put human beings under an fMRI brain scan and they show them pictures of people they're in love with and the hunger center of their brain lights up. It's, so love is more, being in love is more like a, a desire, a craving rather than an emotion, right? It's something that makes us nuts. It's as if you're, when you're in love, it's as if you're starving or dying of thirst, right? So this is the other thing. Uh, desire or need for the Greeks in Eros is contingent upon the object being out of reach. This is crucially important. When you're in love, the object has to be a little bit out of reach. If some, and you know, you probably uh, are aware of this to some extent that if someone is just too nice or not much of a challenge, there isn't what we what you might call the spark there. What creates that spark is that the person is mysterious. They're a little bit out of reach. They're not too easy to get to know. They're not too easily available. Uh, years ago before they were texting, there was a debate about when you would get uh, the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever, uh, when you would get their number, uh, how long would you wait to call them? You couldn't call them immediately because then it would look too eager, right? In other words, you would you're, you would be too available and it wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't be interesting enough and desire or eros would be gone, right? So eros is a need for an object that you don't yet have. Okay, and it makes you crazy, it makes you hungry, and it makes you nuts, and it's something not within your control totally. Okay, it makes you manic. Um, and interestingly enough, in the Greek um, uh, god system or pantheon, uh, Eros had gave birth to a child, uh, namely hedone, which in Greek is pleasure. So pleasure and Eros go together, and they're both manic, they're both irrational, they're outside of our control. Okay, what's also interesting about Eros is that um, when you're in love, the object is outside of your, your grasp, but you know, just like when I'm thirsty, if I'm dying of thirst and then I finally drink the water and I get my fill, all of a sudden I'm not interested. If you, if you say, Dwayne, would you like some more water? No, I'm good. If, we have, if, if the object of Eros becomes too easily available, we don't like it anymore. And so for the Greeks, it's very, very important that you get control over your erotic passion, your, your feeling of being in love. Very, very many rational, Good people will lose their mind when they go through a terrible heartache in love or they go through a breakup. I've seen uh, in my own life, people I know, 
lose lose it almost over 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 relationships that can really be very upsetting for most people so for the greeks then we might say something like what philia is is the transition from the irrational side of eros to the rational side of love okay that if there are in, in in what aristotle might say is that if there is nothing to the relationship besides this desire then the relationship isn't going to last because eros is fickle and ephemeral okay now uh, we're going to move into what exactly philia is, but let's just say for now that philia is the more rational, is the tempering and uh, uh, um, regulating of eros and transmutation of it into something spiritual. You've heard of platonic love. Platonic love for Plato, and he writes about this in the symposium, is when you, you move eros from the physical to the metaphysical or to the spiritual, from the bodily to the spiritual, when you fall in love, not just simply with someone's appearance or their body, but their soul. And we might say what Aristotle means by philia is, is, is a very similar movement, namely the movement from someone's appearance or their body to their soul, okay? So philia, then we can say is rational, it's, it's spiritual, it's moving to the higher realms, it's, it's disciplined, it's more in our control.